on the constitution matter. Why do we advocate for the total scrap of our present 1999 constitution? The constitution does not provide for acceptable fiscal federalism, which means that states cannot generate sufficient revenue on their own because all minerals, mineral resources are vested in the exclusive control of the federal government. States do not need to depend on or be controlled by the federal government. Besides Lagos, Rivers, and one or two other states in Nigeria, most states depend on the Federation account for as much as 80% of their revenue. So in what way will such a constitution promote autonomy and intentionality with resources, areas for revenue generation, and sustainability internally? In one breath, the constitution gives the state government control over local governments. But in another breath, it makes local councils subordinate to the federal government. Thus, while the state government can create local governments and determine their structure, their powers, and their functions, it is the responsibility of the National Assembly to incorporate any newly created local government into the constitution by way of constitutional amendment, which is quite cumbersome and in most cases unrealistic. I feel this process can be usurped by powers that be for undue dominance and ultimately control. The Constitution, in furtherance of its centralizing tendencies, has no place for state or local police, whereas security is better handled at the local level. The issue of banditry, kidnapping, and the general insecurity is local and is therefore better handled locally. However, there is no provision in the Constitution that allows government as chief security officers of their respective states to create and manage security outfits in their states because by Constitution, there can only be one police force for the entire Federation and all individuals and persons of the police are prohibited from creating any other police force or security outfit to coexist with the current police force. State autonomy and policing is a huge plus on peace and development. The constitution also fails to state the specific functions of state and local governments, but it takes time to elaborate the powers and functions of the federal government. This tends to subordinate the state's government to the central government and puts the federal status of the 1999 constitution at a debate. How will the local governments and states function in their fullness when the constitution is not clear as to what exactly their powers and functions are? For us to have a brand new constitution, there are some steps to follow. Number one will be the referendum, where representatives at the legislature should be tasked with meeting their constituents and detailing every desire of these constituents for what the constitution should look like. These meetings can span months. All points must be properly documented in the most transparent and painstaking manner possible. Then there is a constitutional convention where the same representatives from the National Assembly and other stakeholders will publicly meet and debate on what should be contained in the constitution and what shouldn't. Every representative must be allowed free speech just like the Constitutional Convention assembled in Philadelphia in May 1787. Then there will be the documentation process. After debates have been properly weighed and analysis derived, decisions should be put in writing by a committee and then compressed. All parties will then sign an agreement if and when the document satisfies the needs of their constituents. Finally, there will be approval and implementation by the president. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, three things stood out for me there that I would really like to look at. Number one is the issue of the exclusive and the concurrent lists, mm -hmm. which limits the powers the, the state government have to you know, explore and all that stuff. Number two is policing. And number three is the power of the local government and the state government. Now, regarding the, regarding the exclusive list, I'd like to address that by quoting the biblical verse that we all know the uh, parable of the, the talents, where the man gave some out and one kept it. I know at a point he said that you were not faithful in little. Mm -hmm. And he took it from the guy that had one and, and gave it to the guy that had 10. 
That's what's happening in Nigeria now. Yes, we know that there are limitations to the ability of states to explore their natural resources. But when Nigeria had its boom, I mean, the success of Nigerian states or Nigeria as a state mm -hmm. did not come from the, all these so-called natural resources. It came from agriculture. In the north, they were exporting hides and skin, or what's it called? Mm -hmm. in, the, in the west, cocoa. In the east, palm oil and all those other things. The state's government still have control over all these resources. Mm -hmm. What have they done with it? Nothing. Rather, they sit down in their states and go cup in hand to the federal government and lament and get every citizen worked up, demanding for things to be migrated from the exclusive to the concurrent. Now, I'm not saying that is wrong. No, we need it. Mm -hmm. The states need to have control. But I'm saying, even what you have control over right now, what why are wouldn't, what are you doing with it? Why wouldn't a Boeing say, or let's say some states in the north say, okay, I grow pepper, I grow this, I grow that. Lagos, you are a consumption state. Now, let's come to the government of Lagos, because yes, we have Ministry of Agri in Lagos, but we can't have time to grow anything. I'm sorry. Why won't you look for collaborations like it happened on the Day and we had, the, is it Kebi, Kebi Rice? Kebi Rice, yeah. If we do more of that, our state will grow. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time for states like Lagos to also say, okay, I, there are too many people in Lagos. I'm taking my money, partnering with Anambra or Eboe or Imo State. I'm coming to set up a palm oil plantation. Just do that. 30% or 50% of it comes to Lagos. Mm -hmm. The remaining we export. Mm -hmm. We're creating jobs for the people there to stay there. Do the same thing in the north with rice. Do the same thing in the southwest. And you will reduce the pressure on Lagos. That is the problem of Lagos. Now, when it comes to policing, it's another fairy tale that, yes, we need. Again, it's good to have police in your state mm -hmm. that you can relate with. But, but to say everything goes back to the IGP for approval is not true. And I'll give you a very simple example. Go ahead. Um, Governor Wiki, mm. Yesun Wiki, and uh, his arch <laughs> rival, yeah, uh, what is his name, the former <laughs> governor, Rosemary Amici. Amici. Rosemary Amici was on, his, was on a visit to River State, mm. blaring his convoy. Mm -hmm. He's a federal minister, mm -hmm. has that federal capacity. Mm -hmm. Governor Wiki was also coming, mm. blaring his, in his convoy. A state, ordinary state governor, that doesn't have control over the state police. Supposedly. Ah, that, that, you know, I'm using what everybody says. doesn't have. They meet. And because it's the governor of the states, the policemen that were with the federal minister had to calm down for him. Mm. Again, when the federal government sent DSS to arrest a, a, a judge in his states, it wasn't in the state house. It was in the house of the judge. He went there and told them they don't have the oh, capacity Jesus, not... and they pulled out you know you know I, I i need to add this part here okay governors become selective with when they are chiefs thank security you officers. that is what That's Nigerians amazing. have never and, and let me bring out another case if you remember the case of um uh, this uh, emo state yeah where the president governor is turning on uh when when they want to they can activate they can state activate. apparatus exactly. especially so that's where we're especially for it to be during especially during mm -hmm. elections exactly. state governors control everything. everything even the way state electoral commissions vote and Every how the voters are, thing. then w selectively when there's banditry they are not in control they're not in control <laughs> really it, and, and and i tell people okay if there's any armed robbery case now like for example what happened in um uh um uh, what's this place quara state uh, offer yes okay i doubt the governor needed to call the igp to release his boys you know, you know, the, the, you see, the breakdown of the police systems, but the police structure in Nigeria is such that, you know, you have the state's commander, you have the, um, is it regional or local government kind of commander, then even within local government, you have subunits. That's why you have the subdivision, et cetera. Now, if things are happening, for example, let's say in this coastal affair area, and there's crisis, the commander in charge of this division doesn't need to call the state commander to take for charge. approval. It takes charge. The one in the local government doesn't need to call this divisional commander before he takes charge. So if there is anything happening, what I believe is a problem with policing in Nigeria, which is something we really need to address, what? is that, number one, the people are under-equipped. Given. The emoluments do not exist. 
I wouldn't go kill myself. All the policemen that have been killed on the street, what has happened to their family? And we're humans. If my fellow policeman goes on, on mission, dies in Nigeria, and you say, hey, sorry, and all you get is a letter to the family, why would I die for a country? However, two days ago, a few days ago, there was this thing about Nigeria sending 144 policemen to Somalia. It's, as a, it's, a, a, um, it's an international mission. They are catered for, they are paid well. Policemen will kill to go there. And when they get there, that is when you know Nigerian policemen are professionals. Now, let me ask because they'll show up. I'll they'll be, show up. I, I need to add a point before I now go over the same, you know, the whole thing <laughs> my own, with my own version of Virgin, how yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You have less than 500,000 policemen policing 200 million people. Yeah, people. And half of them are with VIPs or vital assets, meaning yes. banks, CBN, CBN ETC. Yeah. So we approximately have 210,000 policemen policing 200 million people. <laughs> you know what are you asking for? Who does for? that? <laughs> what are they, so this is not even a problem. Now, states, they make me laugh. You're talking about removing this from concurrent list to exclusive list. Now I'm going to, number one, states kidnap the entire local government, which is this problem with, with democracy in Nigeria. Nigeria yes. So you can't ask for more control of resources when you are even kidnapping the resource of the local governments under you. Now, federal government pays directly to local governments. States have ingeniously come up with a very brilliant uh, ministry, which is Ministry of so-called Intergovernmental and Lifting LG Funds Affairs. No, I just added that clause. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they conveniently did that, and then ensure that the funds are kept in the intergovernmental uh, affairs. Then they disburse what they feel like. Governors are not as rich as they're supposed to be. As regards policing, we must be honest. Any governor that opens his mouth to discuss restructuring is one of the enemies of democracy. And here is why. Mm. If you haven't provided autonomy, and even after the presidential, the presidential executive, uh, executive order, order 10 yeah. of 2020, which instructs the autonomy to the judicial and the legislature, and governments are not uh, governors are not following, which restructuring are you talking about? Exactly. You want it from the federal. So I do not me. support, let me finish. Okay. I do not support a state police with the present powers Structure. conferred on the state governor Thank you. as it is. So let's be careful with the Arsenal example <laughs> and this. We're, no, we're, we're tilting now there. because we don't to... hate football because Arsenal No, no, no. Up. I'm so let's be careful no, 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 because no. some governors are messing up. You don't no, no, no. I'm not because of some which? governors. No, yeah. I'm being honest. Okay. With the powers conferred, on governors mm -hmm. by the constitution. Mm -hmm. If you hand them a state police, number one, nobody will be able to talk in that state. Number two, nobody will be able to run against them. There will be no opposition mm -hmm. because they have kidnapped the legislature, the, the uh, LG, the and yes. you so now want to solution? give them enforcement. Simple, create local police. Okay. Police should be restructuring. So in, uh, in writing yeah. a new con constitution, what we are saying is it can be local. It was yes, stated yes. there. So it shouldn't, it shouldn't be, states. be states. It should be local. Why should it be Fantastic. states? And, and you know, one other thing I think we should consider when it comes to policing is this. The reason they give for policing is that, okay, we want to have control. The federal government is controlling everything. Mm -hmm. But this is what they forget. If you have state police and you still have a bad federal government, the federal police still has more power than your state police. So it can come into your states oh, yes, and right. take over. Because what you're saying now is abusing the system. Because what is happening now, what they claim is happening, that the federal uh, controls everything, is an abuse, if that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. So if you're running away from abuse, you don't create another avenue for even bigger abuse. True. The Constitution will be clear on what to do in such a situation, and then no. we'll enforce it. Well, so many things that are written in the Constitution that we're not enforcing right now. Mm. For example, mm. local so, government autonomy, judiciary, and all which, that. Which are already provided in for the in the Constitution. Yeah. Constitution you know, yes. the major problem of the Constitution in Nigeria is that it is not even implemented to 40%. Yeah, exactly. That's where the major problem that's is. It. And that's why a lot of people are scary to talk about a new Constitution. Mm -hmm. Because if we have a new Constitution, then with the improved... Senate that we have with the tenth assembly, the ninth assembly is the most brilliant assembly as I've ever seen. Mm. Of course, I'm speaking such. Are you? But but you know, if you have that caliber of, of people, people in the yeah. house, in the federal house, with a new constitution, we are doomed. I'm being honest, and I can assure you, 50% of them do not even know Nigeria's constitution. Mm. That's true. 
that in itself, I agree. 100%. So the, I think one of the key things in trying to get a new constitution will be as Nigeria is trying to get a new constitution, we also should try and get at least 40, 48 senators into the house mm -hmm. and like 160 house of rep into the houses. Mm -hmm. So that we know that while we are creating a new constitution, it's with a new, it's crop, with of a new crop of minds yeah. that actually know what they are doing. Yeah. And now this should not be, um, ah, this person stood during NSARS. Ah, the person will probably make a good legislator. No, no the person will not make a good true. legislator. That is a big mistake. May not. May not. May not. Obviously, Tested. in times, in my political experience, 70% of the time will not make a good... They will go through the electoral college as well. We would ensure that Electro happens. Okay. So keep Which is going. Keep going. Keep okay, going. we'll try to teach so them that. Yeah. Let's so be careful. We are solution be providers be here. We can't just be talking about uh, the problems. Yeah, yeah, we are yeah, also yeah, yeah. preferring solutions. Yeah, so if we pick someone who is able to speak. We just say, go through the process to learn, like no, you said, no, no, you yeah. don't become a doctor. So we teach you, we teach you what yeah. you do course, so that, that you can solve. add it to all the other charisma yeah, that, 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 that you that have. To solve it. Yes. But, you know, I think what will also help solving it best mm -hmm. is that when we finish teaching those who are aspiring for office, we also teach the constituents what to expect from them. That is key. Because, and that is what we need before we can introduce a new constitution. Because, you see, I always say, I believe that a lot of people that are vying for the seat of the president. I'm sorry, let me just say the Fela Duroto is the We can do without Kwezi calling and, names, yes. Okay. All, I mean, these are people I respect. <laughs> yes. I mean, in terms of their success rate mm. and all that. I believe rather than go to the presidency, we need to get them into the, the, the National Assembly. Because if we get a lot more of them into the National Assembly, it will be easier to then speak with the president. Our conversations here will never be complete. And they will not be complete without you. At The Positive Professional says, way to go, Joyce. You're such a confident, positive inspiration. Keep impacting and imparting positively. Thank you so much. Do well to follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag TheAdvocateNG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag TheAdvocateNG. To catch up on previous broadcasts, go to PlusTVAfrica.com forward slash the Advocate NG. Kayode is next after this break. Don't go anywhere.